hey welcome back to our shop just outside of Kennesaw here in North Georgia well if you follow the channel at all you know the last two videos have been complete restorations one was the maple dresser that we refinished in the burnt umber and it came out gorgeous and the next one was the uh, beautiful uh, Victorian style tea top table the mahogany one by Baker furniture which also came out wonderfully uh, as many of you know I also uh, have a partnership with a gentleman who has a used furniture store in the next town north of me and I try to do a few pieces for him a month where I take a piece of furniture that maybe is a little bit beat up maybe a little bit on the lower end and just touched up uh, make it pretty for the next owner that may not have the financial resources to buy a piece like the uh, the tea table we just did so it's time to get that done oh and in between those two pieces I also did a walnut uh, low boy from probably 1855 and I didn't make a video of that I'm sorry I just kind of got into it and uh, didn't think of it but I will uh, attach some pictures of that finished product right now and you can see that came out pretty well well here's our projects for today and they're on my industrial factory cart that I bought for just this purpose because frankly I'm just getting too old to carry this stuff back to the shop but we have a a sofa table made in Thailand and it's got the, you know the typical stuff from new furniture the, that's how they mount the legs and they come loose but this isn't in really too bad shape I'll just clean this up probably shoot a coat of black lacquer on that and we'll move this on the next one is this gigantic uh, coffee table this is uh, American signature furniture sorry American signature furniture but it's a piece of junk it's it's particle board with this make-believe fancy laminate on it it's 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 junk uh, <clears throat> if the top turns out to be lacquer what I'll do is wet sand it glaze it and shoot a coat of lacquer on it if the top is not lacquer I think I'm just going to polish it up because the top is fairly scratched and dirty but that's the second piece and then the third piece is this uh, older chest of drawers one two three four five five drawer chest of drawers it's actually not a bad little chest it's 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 light duty you know fairly thin uh, drawer fronts but it's all wood and uh, it's not in really too bad a shape what we're going to do is just clean it up I'll do some color touch-ups on some of the boo-boos around here. The drawers have some scrapes and scratches on them that we'll take care of. And then we've got a little piece here that chipped off, and I have it. And what I'm going to do is I'll show you uh, uh, what's a uh, super glue. Uh, it's also sold as what they call P2P, something like that. But anyways, it's basically just you just put super glue on here in an accelerator, and in like five seconds it's glued back on so you don't have to use yellow glue and clamps and hold it for you know overnight or four hours but again this is just you know this kind of stuff and we'll just get this cleaned up so that's the projects for today I'll give them to you you know fairly quickly as we as we rip through them but it won't be just but a few hours to get these three pieces cleaned up and ready for sale Here's a, a little tip for you. These are the kinds of drawers that don't come out if they fly open. They'll stop right here. And sometimes there's a wooden block that blocks them. But in this case, if you look up in here, you're not going to be able to to see here. You can see that piece of plastic. But here it is on this one that I've already removed. And what you have to do is slide your finger up there, push this piece of plastic down, and then you can get the drawer out. Uh, what a lot of people do is get frustrated and then you just yank and they wind up breaking this off. So just a little bit of patience and you can get these uh, get these drawers on. I'm going to have to uh, <clears throat> just get these screws out of here off these last poles and this will be ready for cleaning up. Okay, let me show you real quick how I do the color touch-ups. I've 
I've done that before. Here we've got some chips. I just take some uh, satin lacquer and I'll do a nice little mist coat just to make it sticky on there. And then the color that matches this finish the best, I think, is a dark burnt umber. I have some Mohawk blend all powder stain. These are just uh, pigmented powders. And then there's the, the area. I'm just going to tap that on there. And tapping on the, the color. And then I draw it across just a little bit. And then hit it with some more lacquer. And bang. It's covered up. Okay, I'll repeat the process all the way around the table. And we'll move from there. So what I've done is I've just given it a light sanding with the, uh, I don't know, I think this is 220, and just to break up the finish here, and then the next step is going to be to wash it down with naphtha, just in case there's any silicone on here, the naphtha will sometimes help with the silicone, and then uh, we'll shoot a light coat of, uh, of lacquer on that, and hopefully we won't have any reactions. Naphtha is an oil solvent, silicone is an oil, and naphtha is similar to mineral spirits, although it's more highly refined and it will flash off more quickly than mineral spirits. But uh, don't skip this step, and even when you do this step, if there is significant silicone on here, you may have a problem when it comes time to uh, lacquer it. And here's some uh, Van Dyke Brown Glaze. We're going to put a very, very light coat on it. Basically, we just want to get the color inside any of the scratches. So what I'll do is wipe this on with a brush and then wipe it off with a rag lightly and leave just, just enough on here to give it a nice, even color coat. So I'll bring you back when it's done. Okay, we've got the glaze on. I brushed it out real thin. And then just using a light touch with a rag, I wiped it all nice and thin. So what we're hoping for is that just enough of the glaze has settled into any of the scratches to help color them and tone them down. So that's almost ready for a lacquer coat and uh, hopefully it works. Always your first coat needs to be a mist coat. It'll help prevent your finish from crawling if there is any contamination. But as you look at this, I'm not seeing any indications of silicone problems whatsoever. So we're going to let this set up for 10 or 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll shoot another coat on it. But this is, this is going to look brand new when it's done. I'm real happy with this. I just wanted to show, show you how nice this top came out using that technique. It is absolutely gorgeous. I shot it with a, a satin lacquer and with that little bit of uh, glaze that we put in there, it, it just glows. This thing, uh, this thing looks almost brand new. So I'm real happy about that. Okay, I've got you up on top of the dresser now. It's on the table on its side, and it's actually just a little bit too high for me to work on it comfortably, but that's the only way you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. What I'm using is just a thin super glue. I buy this from my local supplier. There's a company that sells a kit called 2P10, two part 10 minutes, and it's basically the same thing. It's a cyanoacrylate glue with an aerosol accelerator. Now this is this is by Mohawk, but the one that you can get for 2P10 you can get off Amazon for about 30 bucks for the kit, I believe. And what's nice about this is that it's it's almost instantaneous bonding. So instead of having to use yellow yellow glue and clamp this and leave it, I can just uh, work this in right now, hold it down with my finger, spray it, 
and and I'm done, and I can move on to the next one, next project. Now just remember, this is super glue. Super glue sticks to your fingers, it gets in your eyes, it gets on your eyeglasses, and you're gonna you're gonna have a problem with it. So be a little bit careful. But let me show you how I uh, how I do this here. And what we're doing here is just laying down a piece of veneer, getting it tight, holding it where it needs to be, and then I spray that act activator on it and just hold it down for five or ten seconds. And there you go, it's down. I got two more pieces I need to fit in. But you've got the idea. So that's how you use that kind of glue for a, a fast repair. And here's one of the drawers of the uh, chest of drawers that we're polishing up a little bit. And what you can see here are some scuffs, some scratches, some uh, paint marks, and some more dings here. Now again, we could take the, take the handles off. There's two screws holding each one in. So there's one, two, three, four, five times four, that'd be 20 screws to pull these all off. We could light sand them and color touch up each of them and then shoot lacquer on them. But there's another technique that we can use when the damage isn't quite so severe and it's a whole lot faster and many of you are familiar with that. And that's just to use some scratch cover and steel wool. Scratch cover is basically just a dyed oil that goes on and it penetrates into the scratches and darkens them so they're not quite so visible. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just basically a way of concealing the damage, but it does look nice. Uh, what I normally do when I use scratch cover and I use Old English is just to follow it up while it's still wet with a little bit of a wax. And that wax and oil uh, puts a nice finish on the, on the piece and, and pretties it right up. So that's another uh, technique for concealing scratches. And that's what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is take some uh, a crud cutter and get this paint off. Then I'm going to come back with some scratch cover and steel wool and do all of these drawers. Then I'll put them back into the dresser, which I've already, I've already scratch covered the case. And we'll wax the whole thing, and it'll look beautiful. So I'll bring you back. And here's how I do it. I take the Old English and I put it into a little bottle because their little drip bottle will drive me insane trying to use it. It's so hard to use, so I just take the top off of it and put it in this. And then I put it either onto the piece or onto the steel wool. And again, you got to pardon me because I'm using just one hand here. And then we just work it in. There's no problem getting it on the, the brass. It's just oil. It'll wipe right off when you go turn it back up. And work it into the drawer. And you can let it set for a while if you wish. Um, I've never just left it on because, frankly, when it's wet, it looks shiny and everybody thinks they've done a great job, but you just can't have your furniture dripping with oil. That's just not, not the way to do things. But I'll just keep, you know, I'll just lightly rub it out with the steel wool and let it soak in. And you can see how the drawer is looking great already. And then I'll just wipe, lightly wipe off the excess. I'm not trying to scrub it off or anything. I'll just lightly wipe it. And there you go. Look at that drawer. That took, what, two minutes? So that's another technique you can use. It's, it's legitimate. There, it's, this, isn't, this isn't smoke and mirrors. It's a legitimate restoration technique for uh, concealing scratches when you don't want to do a complete refinish. And you can see how nice that uh, chest of drawers came out with a little bit of restoration that we did on it. And I'm going to use a little, a little wax. What I found to be a real good stuff is this Howard's Feed and Wax. It's beeswax and orange oil. You can get it at Home Depot. It's not cheap. It's, I don't think it's over ten bucks a bottle, but it works really, really well. And what's nice about it is it goes on in a semi-liquid state, so you don't have to buff the bejesus out of it like you would with something like uh, Brie Wax, which is also a good wax. Fittis is a good wax. 
but uh, this is the easiest stuff to use. So I'll just put this on, and uh, really basically all I do is I just, if I can get some out, I just put some on the, on the piece, and then I just, just work it in with some 4 aught steel wool, you know, catch it in some raking light to make sure you're getting a light coat on everything. You don't want to, uh, to put too much on. And then we just let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes and I buff it off. And frankly, lots of times you don't even have to if you put it on thin enough because it's, it's really a very fine wax, very high quality. I, I really like using it. But there you go. So you look at the, at the top now on raking light and it looks brand new. Okay, so that's the, uh, another technique to, to put in your arsenal. Okay, we've got her all wiped down with naphtha, lightly sanded the top, some other areas of it, and I'm getting ready to shoot it in black lacquer. She just got the final coat of black lacquer on the sofa table. We'll let that dry for a half hour or so, and I'll throw those knobs back on, and that'll be done. The uh, coffee table is done and looking great, and the chest of drawers is done and looking great. So it's probably, it was about two hours to get these three pieces of furniture uh, ready for sale. Now listen, these are techniques that I developed uh, myself by reading and, and, and watching videos and, and experimenting and a lot of experience. Uh, please feel free to use whichever ones work for you. Sometimes the uh, recoating over old top coat is not going to work. Make sure that you're comfortable before you do it or you're willing to try it and if it reacts or runs or whatever that you're willing to sand it off and refinish it but uh, there you go there's three pieces of furniture that were destined for the junkyard that there I paid twenty dollars for this one and that one were given to me to to uh, do something with because they had outlived their usefulness with their prior owners because of the finished problems so there we go three pieces of furniture that aren't going to go to the landfill and it only took a couple hours so listen, I hope you learned something from our shop just outside of Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Thanks for watching. Best regards. And take good care. Bye.